Already this morning, there were some allusions to the Africa that you hear about all the time. The Africa of HIV AIDS, the Africa of malaria, the Africa of poverty, the Africa of conflict, and the Africa of disasters. Well, it is true that those things are going on. There's an Africa that you don't hear about very much. And sometimes I'm puzzled, and I ask myself why. This is the Africa that is changing, that Chris alluded to. This is the Africa of opportunity. This is the Africa where people want to take charge of their own futures and their own destinies. And this is the Africa where people are looking for partnerships to do this. That's what I want to talk about today. And I want to start by telling you a story about that change in Africa. On 15th of September 2005, Mr. Depreya Lamesega, a governor of one of the oil-rich states of Nigeria, was ar arrested by the London Metropolitan Police on a visit to London. He was arrested because there were transfers of $8 million that went into some dormant accounts that belonged to him and his family. This arrest occurred because there was cooperation between the London Metropolitan Police and the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission of Nigeria, led by one of our most able and courageous people, Mr. Nuhu Ribadu. Alame Sega was arraigned in London due to some slip-ups. He managed to escape dressed as a woman and ran from London back to Nigeria, where, according to our constitution, those in office as governors, president, as in many countries, have immunity and cannot be prosecuted. But what happened? People were so outraged by this behavior that it was possible for his state legislature to impeach him and get him out of office. Today, Alams, as we call him for short, is in jail. This is a story about the fact that people in Africa are no longer willing to tolerate corruption from their leaders. This is a story about the fact that people want their resources managed properly for their good and not taken out to places where they'll benefit just a few of the elite. And therefore, when you hear about the corrupt Africa, corruption all the time, I want you to know that the people and the governments are trying hard to fight this in some of the countries, and that some successes are emerging. Does it mean the problem is over? The answer is no. There's still a long way to go, but that there's a will there, and that successes are being chalked up on this very important fight. So when you hear about corruption, don't just feel that nothing is being done about this, that you can't operate in any African country because of the overwhelming corruption. That is not the case. There is a will to fight, and in many countries, that fight is ongoing and is being won. In others, like mine, where there has been a long history of dictatorship in Nigeria, the fight is ongoing and we have a long way to go. But the, the, the truth of the matter is that this is uh, going on. The results are showing independent uh, uh, monitoring by the World Bank and other organizations show that in many instances, the trend is downwards in terms of corruption and governance is improving. A study by the Economic Commission for Africa showed a clear trend upwards in governance in 28 African countries. And let me say just one more thing before I leave this area of governance. That is that people talk about corruption, corruption. All the time when they talk about it, you immediately think about Africa. That's the image, African countries. But let me say this. If Alams was able to export $8 million into an account in London, if the other people who are taking money, estimated at 20 to 40 billion now, of developing countries' monies sitting abroad, in the developed countries. If they're able to do this, what is that? Is that not corruption? In this country, if you receive stolen goods, are you not prosecuted? So when we talk about this kind of corruption, let us also think about what is happening on the other side of the globe, where the money is going, and what can be done to stop it. I'm working an initiative now, along with the World Bank, on asset recovery, trying to do what we can to get the monies that have been taken abroad developing countries' monies to get that sent back. 
Because if we can get the $20 billion sitting out there back, it may do far more for some of these countries than all the aid that is being put together.